Hello, everybody. I'm Sue Nakanishi at the Langley Adams Library in Groveland, Massachusetts. And I am so excited to have all these other libraries that asked if they could join in and um, partner with Robert Hayes and I. Robert is at Tewksbury's Library. And thank you, Robert, so much for helping me out with this program. Um, I'd like to thank Andover, Ashland, Burlington, Canton, Carlisle, Cohe Cohe Cohasset. Cohasset, thank you. Danvers, Dover, New Hampshire, Falmouth, Foxborough, Guilford, New Hampshire, Groveland, Hamilton, Wenham, Hanover, Ipswich, Lexington, Lowell, Manchester by the Sea, Marlborough, Maynard, Melrose, Methuen, Middleton, Needham, Newport, New Hampshire, Newton, North Reading, Norwell, Rowley, Stowe, Tewksbury, Tinsboro. West Newberry, Westboro, Westford, and Wilmington. Thank you all for joining and everybody, because I know there's more than just those libraries from other people that um, are joining us tonight. Um, I would like to introduce everyone to the Assistant Director of the Social Media at Kensington Press. It's thanks to Kensington Press that I and Robert and I are both able to have our special guest tonight. And I'm gonna turn it over to Lauren and let her introduce these wonderful, awesome author <laughs> sisters. Thank you. Hi y'all, uh, like Sue said, I am Lauren Jernigan. I am the Assistant Director of Social Media for Kensington Publishing Corps. Uh, I'm really excited to be here. So thank you so much to Sue and Robert and all of the libraries for letting me come and run this chat. I love getting to do these types of events and I really, really love getting to do these events with these two awesome, amazing superstar ladies. I have been working with them for almost nine years now in January, which is, I'm gonna not talk about ages anymore because that yeah. just really, really hit hard. I didn't realize how long it had been, but I have had a, the complete honor of working with both of these authors for almost nine years now and it is always such a great time. So I'm really looking forward to asking them your questions and getting to have this conversation. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Lisa Jackson and Nancy Bush, the amazing New York Times bestselling authors of so many of all of our favorite thriller mystery novels. Um, thank you ladies so, so much for agreeing to do this conversation with us. Thanks for having us. Yes. I thought before we dive into all of the reader questions, I would have you both just introduce your newest books to everyone, just in case they maybe haven't checked them out yet. If they, uh, if you just want to give a shout out, I know you guys are working on tons of books all the time. So if you don't remember the key points, that's okay too. We can dive into it later, but I uh, Nancy, I'm going to let you go first because your book is easier for me to reach right now. So <laughs> Well, The Camp is uh, kind of an amalgam of all those horror camp things. And I have, uh, uh, it's part of the River Glen series. So my people from The Babysitter and The Gossip and The Neighbors that are the three books ahead of it uh, show up again and they're all at this camp that terrible things have happened. And, and they, some of them were there before and now they're back and more bad things happen. <laughs> I think that's a great way to sum up uh, pretty much all of your books is bad things happen <laughs> just around every corner. Uh, Lisa, how about you? Your newest book, which is just the cool, I love this cover so much. Uh, yeah, so The Last Sinner just came out. Anything you want to say about it? Uh, the Last Sinner is the latest book in the Montoya Bent series. And it has all the characters from the previous uh, New Orleans books that everyone seems to like. Uh, those those characters are getting pretty old now. <laughs> but this book centers a little bit around Christy Bentz, who is uh, Detective uh, Rick Bentz's daughter. And it was fun to go back. I hadn't written one of these books for, I don't know, five years, a, a long time. Other books got in the way. And so... Uh, Going back, of course, you have to remember, you know, who's who's married, who had a kid, <laughs> who, di who died. Oh, Lord. Anyway, um, I went uh, I got to go back and I got to 
explorer uh, Christie's um, life and uh, Cruz Montoya, who was in uh, the previous one of the previous books that was such a good one. What was the name of that book? Oh, here's I should be looking at this, but I can't. Uh, <laughs> I can't come up with it either. It's the one where the woman, the nun. Uh, mm, well, is anyway. it devious? Yes. There you I go. Believe. Thank you to David. He got okay. it. <laughs> Thank you. He was, it's devious. The reason I can't remember that, it doesn't, the title doesn't go with the book to me in my head. It wasn't my title. And so I think, and I see the cover, the cover was great. But anyway, uh, uh, Cruz Montoya showed up in that book and he was, uh, a lot of people ask about him and I really loved him. He kind of flew off on his motorcycle. So uh, he came back and I enjoyed reconnecting with all those characters and I also was able to bring in that book some uh, a mystery that had started in the original ser uh, book of the series mm -hmm. which at that time I hadn't planned to write a whole series so it was a lot of fun and I enjoyed it and and I should have have a list of my books sitting in front of me so I don't look like <laughs> an idiot <laughs> no I think it's it's totally understandable again based off of the number of books that you both write around the clock. Like, I think, I think we all understand. Um, Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of how many books you guys are always writing, always working on, we have a reader who is curious, you know, how long does it usually take you to write a book? Um, do you usually have a certain amount of time you spend writing it or does it kind of fluctuate and change? Each book is different. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Nancy and I each write off of synopses and we, uh, I usually write a synopsis of about 40 to 70 pages and you, is yours shorter, Nancy? No, I might, they can be, but generally I think about, you know, 40, 50 pages is probably about right. And that takes me almost two or three months to put together. Does it take you that long? Yeah. And, and then of course we don't, we don't listen to them later <laughs> <laughs> yeah then you're going to yeah. go off the rails yeah and, <laughs> and then the the once that book is a once that synopsis is approved and maybe some tweaks are made to it by the editor mm -hmm. uh then it takes i would say six months to a year to write the book don't you think yes yes and there's a lot of downtime with that i mean there's a lot of things going on in our lives all the time so it might not you know, you not, might not pick it up for a few months after you've uh, been okay for the synopsis. And uh, and then, and then like if you, when we're really pouring it on, I think it's about a three to four month pour on period, don't you think? Yeah, so anywhere from maybe, if you threw in the, the synopsis, it's probably anywhere from a six to month to one year uh, Oh, well. gestation period, I would say. Yeah, uh, and I do have to jump in because you did make the comment about how you don't always follow your outline and your synopsis. And I happen to know that because I talk to your editor quite often. <laughs> uh, oh dear. So I, I often, uh, just a little background, I often get told the very early idea of what the synopsis is going to be. And then by the time he gives us and launches the actual book, it never matches the notes that I had at the start. It's um, amazing. We we try, but it's like, no, that isn't working. No, I, oh, I want something different here. So that happens every time. When you start <laughs> to write a book, it took, takes me to about page, I would say almost 150 of mm -hmm. Double Space before I really know the characters and I really know the story and I'm, I'm in it. And right. uh, for example, the book I'm writing now, I sent us some monopsis in and this wonderful uh, prologue. And um, hmm, I'm thinking I'm going to have to ditch the prologue. And I think it's in another book, you know, as a read, a teaser, but <laughs> it's just not fitting in because you don't right. know until you really write the book. Mm -hmm. Well, I was going to ask, you know, is part of that process where it changes, is that because when you're writing the characters speak to you or speak through you or is it just the ideas start coming and you're like oh no I've got it we've got a reverse here I kind of think it's both of those things uh, 
when you know your characters, you know, okay, they wouldn't do that or they would do that. And so there's that. And also the plot itself. I mean, you get some places and you think that is simply not going to work. We got to, we got to retool. <laughs> right. <laughs> it might not work. And then you also might get just an idea and think, oh, it needs to do this. That mm -hmm. would be really good. And it, it's something that comes out of your subconscious. You never even noticed it, especially when you wrote something bare bones nine months earlier. Right. No, I could definitely see how it would change. It just, it is always just very entertaining for me because I will get those initial notes and I go, I'm, I'm just not going to write any of this down because it's not going to be the same <laughs> six same months down the line. Same thing happens like, with the back cover copy. Oh no, no. They're in a right. different place. <laughs> right. Yes. It's it's always a fun little mystery within the mystery of the book itself. It's like, okay, which plot are we actually sticking with? Uh, <laughs> makes it very fun for all of us. I bet. I bet. <laughs> fun, fun is one word. <laughs> well, it's fun for me because I'm not the one editing the book. I just get the fit. I just get the back end of it. Um, but speaking of the craft process and the writing process, we have a reader who is wondering, what is your favorite part of the writing process or, you know, of the newest books you've written? What's your favorite part when you're doing that, when you're getting into it? You mean not the end, not writing the end? <laughs> I mean, if that's your favorite part. <laughs> um, I, I think there's all sorts of different parts. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the things I like is actually coming up with a story idea. And even though we migrate from that idea, I, I love that part of it. I don't know about you, Nance. Yeah, and, and with that comes uh, the because of the way we write books where we write the proposal, send that in, and then there's maybe a gap of time. And before you're really getting back into that, you might write another proposal in between there because it's kind of keeping it going. And... I think one of the hardest things for me, and I'd say probably the same for Lisa, is that once you start writing this other proposal and you think, oh, I really like this one, I really like this one, <laughs> and then you have to sort of like put that one aside and go, okay, back to that one. <laughs> and, and that process happens pretty much every time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, I can imagine it would be really hard to just, you get this amazing idea, you want to just go to it and then realize, oh, no, wait, I have to. I have a different job that has to get finished first. Uh, I can imagine that would be very difficult. <laughs> Sometimes getting into a book that you've pre-agreed to write, you think, mm -hmm. what was I thinking? I don't get <laughs> this. I mean, I, I, and it mm -hmm. takes, because you've been doing other projects and your own life and all these sort of things and and but sometimes you get right into it, though. I mean, it's yeah. amazing. You know, uh, you never know exactly. Well, this right. what I was saying is this one that I was writing that I, that I didn't really want to get into, didn't want to get into. I've loved it. I Once I got into it, I loved it. But there was something about it that I thought, oh, I don't know. I'm not ready for that one. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> and it, once I got into it, I thought, what, what was my problem? So right. are we speaking too weird here? No, not at all. <laughs> I'm following along. I, I do want to take a moment because I did, I was hearing from a lot of people as we were talking about this event that a lot of people are surprised to learn that you're sisters. Um, to me, it's never a surprise. I always think, how does, how do people not know? Like, especially, but then I realize, oh, wait, I've talked to them so many times and they're clearly so in sync to each other. Yeah. Um, but I thought it would be great to take a moment and just talk about how you both got started with writing because it is a very interesting start to writing uh, for anyone who isn't familiar with your background. So I'll let whichever one of you wants to talk about it first. Um, but okay. please. Uh, <laughs> Nance can handle this. I was working. <laughs> for Lisa's husband as doing some bookkeeping at the time. A few years ago. Yeah, ex-husband now, but at the time, yeah, this was, this was, this was way back. And we had um, little children who are in their forties now, but anyway, at the time they were like one and two and, and there was an article in Time Magazine. It was when Reagan was shot on the front cover was, that was what it was. And it was called Moment of Madness. And I was just kind of, flipping through it and they had an article in there about how 
young mothers after the last bottle was washed and the kid was put to bed would drag out their typewriters and create these love stories. And so, um, you know, they were writing these romance novels that was, and it was just all just the, the industry was kind of popping at that time with uh, romance. So we went to dinner, Lisa, myself, and another gal and our husbands. And somewhere during there, I said, hey, did you read this article? And you've read that article, right? Yes, I had read it. And, <laughs> and you I said, said I, th I think we could do this. And I said, are you out of your mind? We've never read a romance <laughs> novel. Are you crazy? <laughs> we liked mystery and suspense. So I thought it was yeah. a crazy idea, but. Mm -hmm. You then pick it up the, from here. The next day I go to my real job, which is babysitting a bunch of kids under four. And I looked around and I thought, oh my God, who am I to say? Why am I a naysayer? You know, you never hear that. So I gave everybody a bottle and pulled out, a, for those of young ones, a manual typewriter <laughs> and paper that was recycled back in the day that looked like Roman meal bread or wheat whole wheat bread. And mm -hmm. somehow I typed seven pages and the typewriter was so bad that it, it cut out the middle part of the E. So there was just a <laughs> hole in the paper. So but I was little holes. <laughs> so proud of myself. And when Nancy came to pick up her daughter, I handed her the daughter and the diaper bag. And then the first seven pages of Stormy for Surrender. Your turn, mm -hmm. Nancy. So then we, we and this other gal that we were with, we decided, hey, let's try writing this. And we all took parts of it and we wrote and we, we hand wrote it and then I took it and at her, at Lisa's husband's office where I was working, I would also spend some time changing it, putting it in, onto the manual typewriter. And we got it done in a few months. It wouldn't take us that long, maybe four or five months, somewhere in there. And we sent it off to, we, we picked up the Writer's Digest and we were like, where can we send to these publishers? So we had all these addresses and we took copies and we sent it off. And we were rejected all over the place. <laughs> oh, man. But some of the rejections were positive. <laughs> How's that for making lemonade out of lemons? And so at least you both can laugh about it. <laughs> we, we were encouraged. We, we, we truly were. I mean, there were those that said, basically, don't darken our door again. But yeah, but there, but, but, uh, yeah if, they, if they gave us a hint, like, well, we're not, we're not really buying. Because we had some suspense in it, of course. And it was like, well, we're not really buying suspense, but if you, you know, kind of care to try again without that, we were like, cool, all right, sure. <laughs> so then uh, Nancy, Nan we split up and Nancy started writing uh, teen romances that were a new thing. And I was writing the longer silhouette special editions and Nancy sold her first book. The first book she wrote on her own. I guess I guess the other person and I were hanging, were pulling her down. <laughs> it's all about timing. It's, you no know, one was pulling were, anyone back. Absolutely. They were they were bumping up uh silhouette at that time was bumping up from two books a month to four. And I my my book came across the transom just about at that same time. So they were like they called me up and said, we want to buy it. And I was like floored, but yay. Yeah. <laughs> and it really gave us encouragement after that. And it wasn't like smooth sailing after that. Oh, I mean, no. we had our ups and downs. Boy, that's for sure. Remember, <laughs> it's been almost 40 years. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, it's one of my favorite stories. I know I make you guys tell that story <laughs> literally every time I get you on a live cast um but it's I truly I truly love how you both came together and how you just went for it you know like you said Lisa you were very much like I don't I don't think so and then just the next morning we're like well why not let's try and I love that yeah. attitude <laughs> the idiocy yeah. of youth I mean <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's the idiocy of youth it's just you know, it, it doesn't hurt to try. Using some time up, you know. It was, it was, it, it's been great. I mean, it was it was really <laughs> good. And if because I'd read the same article, and I I'd always been the person. I went to school, and I was an English major, and I always had been a little dabbled at writing. And Nancy was a, a graduated from Oregon State with a degree in nutrition, and mm -hmm. she was always more into science and math. 
And, but I was the one thinking, oh, I don't know. The the, the odds of this are just like crazy against us. But <laughs> right. Nancy is kind of a, a terrier with a bone. And uh, <laughs> she, she thought we could do it. I mean, she's done a lot of things in her life because she's a terrier with a bone. And I'm a little more gun shy, I guess. But it was a great idea, and uh, I what it taught me is why say no right off the bat. That's mm -hmm. that's that's kind of my first my first response. Uh, I'm suspicious. No, right? Maybe not. Maybe the answer in this case certainly was yes. Full, <laughs> full in. You can always say no, but why why not say yes and give it a try? Well, there you yeah. go. I, I love that. I And again, I just love the very different personality choices that come out of that type of situation, which I think melds very nicely together. And it actually leads us really well into this next reader question. I didn't plan that segue, but it worked out in my favor. <laughs> uh, this reader is wondering, you know, do you think that being sisters makes it easier to write together? being the sisters we are <laughs> okay very good uh, distinction you know there are some sisters who don't get along at right. all mm -hmm. but and, we've been in this endeavor together from the start you know yes. we might write separate books but we're reading each other's books we're talking we're editing we're we we are each other's editor and and so mm -hmm. because yeah, of be, that be honest nance how many yeah. sisters do you know that are as tight as we are well, none, but it doesn't mean that they're not there. <laughs> Maybe it's because of this. I don't know. <laughs> so I don't know that everybody can do it with their sister is my point. Right. But if, if the personalities work and mm -hmm. if you're supportive rather than competitive, that's yeah, yeah. And we do work on each other's books. She's right. She's not, Nancy's not lying right now. <laughs> There, there is no exaggeration happening or creative yeah. licenses. <laughs> so we do work and we have from the get go. And we always, if we have a way to improve the other one's work, we tell them, you know, hey, this is great, but what about this? And we're not like saying, ooh, I have this idea. I'm going to keep it from Nancy. You know, it, it doesn't work mm -hmm. that way. And it's very, and if you very don't like great. it, that's fine too. But how about yeah. this? How about that? Right. Yeah, I was going to ask, you know, do you feel, and like you said, a very important distinction is the type of sisters you are, the personalities you have. Do you find that it's easy to let the other person know like, hey, this doesn't work. This doesn't make sense. Because I know for me that like, I, I struggle a lot to give someone that constructive criticism or be like, I don't, I don't think this is how, you know, the right fit. So do you think that because you know each other so well, it's a little bit easier to do that process? Sure. Nobody ever wants to hear, no, I, I, I've got this great idea. And the other person right. says, well, you know, I don't see it that way. But, right. um, but, but it is true because we know each other so well, that's that, you know, the, the, our shells are thicker as far as if, if right. she's telling me this isn't working, I better listen because yeah. she's not saying it for any other reason other than to help me. Mm -hmm. And however, if I were trying to give advice to somebody like, certainly like uh, someone I didn't know, which I don't do for this very reason, but uh, right. who wants to write and they're asking me, what do you think of this? I, I really struggle with that because I don't want to put them on the wrong track. I don't want to put, <laughs> insert myself in there. It's very hard to, to do that with someone you don't completely trust and know, just know. I, yeah. I did once with a quasi friend, someone mm -hmm. from writing, and I didn't get the book at all. And I gave it to my reader and she didn't get it either. She thought it was just terrible. Well, the book sold and that woman just, and I told her as nicely as I could, boy, I, you know, I, I can't do this anyway. And she was ticked and she's mm -hmm. ticked to this day. And I thought, okay, not doing that ever again, ever. Right. <laughs> Mm -hmm. it just yeah, the, and I and I didn't even giving the advice there's no upside no <laughs> right <laughs> you know it's always going to be not okay you know I mean right. something you know so and I also think it's important I think when Nancy and I do something we don't say well that's crap 
No. Or, right. <laughs> what are you thinking? It's like, hey, I like this, but what about this idea? You know, you, mm -hmm. you we just do it positively instead of it's so it's so easy to be negative. And that's one thing Nancy taught me from the very beginning. We were not romance readers and we were a little snooty about it. And <laughs> way back when there was lots of them and we we're reading them. And Nancy says, you know, every one of these books was bought by an editor. Let's mm -hmm. try to find out why. What's the good in the book? Because it's really easy to say, oh, I don't like that or I don't like that. Or, that doesn't mm -hmm. work. But what is it about that book that captured the editor's attention? So it's right. Not so kudos to Nance for that, because I thought, oh, that's hard. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, that's a very hard outlook to have. And I know, you know, I always think back, speaking of having worked with you guys for almost nine years now, I like it reminds me of one of the very last interview questions I had to get this job was, what do you do if you are asked to work on a book that you don't like or a genre that you don't like? Because I am a big romance reader. It's kind of all I read outside of workbooks. And I remember very clearly, and I still to this day think this, that every book has a benefit to some reader. It may not be me, but someone out there, that is their favorite book. And that's what I have to latch on to. And I think that's a really important process yes. to have because it is easy to say like, oh, this genre is so silly or this one isn't like, why would I want to read this? It's really easy to get into that mindset. So that's exactly just a, right just from my side of things <laughs> well, what was interesting about when we started with this because we hadn't read romance we just done mm -hmm. mystery or whatever but after reading a bunch I was like well I really like this author I really like this <laughs> yeah author. and that, that is what you with know, the open was, mind good yeah. yeah there was still the crap but <laughs> there was yeah. <laughs> there always is everywhere you know yeah right as I, as I say <laughs> as somebody's yeah. saying that about me so I yeah. gotta be careful <laughs> Uh, every genre every grade level has something funky going on somewhere um I do want to say I'm seeing quite a few people in the chat saying that they definitely could not work with their siblings so you know, Lisa, <laughs> I do think and I know I can I could never work with my brother we would kill each other in the process so <laughs> definitely agree one time uh, our father had a horrible had Parkinson's disease horrible horrible so nancy and i are working together mom is still alive but it's it's just killing her too mm -hmm. and we're at the hospital and we have to make some hard decisions about dad and we're in the bathroom and washing our hands and i said oh this is the time when i just wish we had that brother and we looked at each other and we thought nope that wouldn't work either that brother would no. just give us grief so we're better stick it out and just do this ourselves Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I I know the feeling exactly because I my you both know very well. My brother had quite a few medical issues the last few years, and I had the same reaction where I would just look around, but like, why don't I have another brother or sibling to take this burden off of me? And then I go, No, I can't give up control like that. I no. <laughs> I'm gonna handle this. There's gonna be a downside to this. I can see it yeah, already. There's always a downside somewhere. So right. you know. It happens. Yeah, Nancy and I are it. We're just the two of us. We don't have anybody right. else. No, no little or older, younger, or mm -hmm. half siblings or or brothers. So right. <laughs> um, let's see. I know I saw another question come in, so I want to make sure I get to that. So let me scroll back up just a little bit. Oh, I don't know how you keep it straight. Great. <laughs> uh, it takes a lot of practice and days like today I clearly don't find them very easily uh I'll go to this one I do love this question uh this reader is wondering whether or not you have any input or if you're a part of the conversation when it comes to your cover designs you know everyone yeah. always loves to know about the covers so let's talk about it do you get any say in them well I I don't say hey I've got an idea the art department, which is really pretty wonderful, comes out with an idea from the from the book, from the synopsis. And um, <laughs> yeah, that, that oh, magical yeah. piece of paper. <laughs> That's right. And so then then I get to see it and um most of the time. Sometimes I don't mm -hmm. see it or, or but it's by the time I see it, it's pretty much set. And 
Uh, just recently, there was a cover that came through for the book that I'm writing now, which is called Our Little Secret. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful cover. Beautiful cover. Purples and pinks and, and uh, shaded uh, turquoise. And I thought, well, this is a beautiful cover. My name looks good and everything. But where is the uh, suspense in this? Right. Anybody, who, anybody who doesn't know me is going to think, well, what is that secret? Is it a happy secret? <laughs> right, right. I don't think so. So anyway, I said, I really, really, really like this cover, but I think it needs to be darker. And then they did. They came up with some blood spatter or something. Now, mm -hmm. that, that cover may not uh, come to fruition because I don't have the the final say the final say comes from the sales department okay, yeah, they okay. have to be, be the one i don't it, because i don't even it. know who has the final say i i just okay. get told i just get told when it's ready <laughs> it's some mystery person well I, yeah, it, uh, the sales department at least that's who they say, tell me yes oh, yeah I, I finally say oh yeah that, that works yeah whatever sales doesn't like it we have to start over <laughs> okay yes and i always think sales knows more than I do about selling books. So I go with it. Yes. Yes. They are. They're very good at what they do. Even if sometimes I'm like, yeah, but Instagram would like something different. You know, I've learned I've got to, got to listen to the experts sometimes. <laughs> Nancy, how about you? Do you get any like say, or is it the same process for you? Pretty much the same process, but they've really been hitting it out of the park. I really thought the camp was a great cover. I just I like the letter. Oh, I'm obsessed I like the with this cover. Yes, yeah. it's wonderful. All of all of that whole series, Nance. You know, the babysitter, the the camp, the neighbor, the is it the gossip? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I thought every one of them was really good because it mm -hmm. it conveys what the book is about. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, I will say the camp. The first time I saw the cover for the camp, I did. I was like, "Oh, this is a horror movie that I would never watch. I can't. <laughs> I don't do scary things." And this cover, I was like, "Oh, this is going to be too much for me." <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we do have some more questions coming in. I want to make sure I can get to as many as we can. Okay. All right, so we've got a question coming in from Sue's library group. They're wondering, uh, how do you come up with your new ideas? Where do you get your inspiration from? You know, we used it, to say, look to the news, but I don't do that anymore. <laughs> oh, God, no. Um, right. <laughs> a little dangerous now. <laughs> but I, everywhere, uh, mm -hmm. one of my books that I always talk about is, uh, without mercy see i remember mm -hmm. the title and there you go. Um, i was going to write this other book and i'm driving this beautiful day and i'm got the radio on and i'm listening to the radio and i'm at a stop sign and they start talking about uh if you have a troubled teen we have this academy for him and they have the mom well we didn't like where little johnny was going with his friends but we sent him to the ABC Academy, we came back with a wonderful new teenager. And I mm -hmm. sat there and I remember my children and I thought, that wouldn't have worked for them. <laughs> and, and what if you sent your kid and it was a bad thing? And what if, and then I hear, me, me, the guy behind me, the lights turn green, I'm musing away. But I did a U-turn and I drove back and I called John and said, scrap everything, this is what I want to mm -hmm. write. That was an inspiring moment. What about you, mm -hmm. Moon? Ooh, I don't know. I, um, John, speaking of him, he was the one that kind of brought up the babysitter. When I began this series, he said, he was just talking about how uh, the original Halloween movie was about a babysitter who, you know, is terrorized by you know, Jamie Lee Curtis and all that. Anyway, and it was just kind of like, the title was right there. And so it was kind of like, I will... Oh, uh, I, I had a story set in a high school, kind of mostly around, and uh, you know it was around Halloween, so they had some of the same kind of stuff. And I think it's one of my uh, of my books. It's one of the ones that people like the most. I think it, mm -hmm. it's it's uh, it kind of captured it, I guess. It it that one Have is you such read that a one? Good one. It's not a horror one. 
it's not a horror <laughs> one. I have read that one. Uh, it, it was scary, but not too scary. So I was okay. I, I did get through that one. Um, no, I was going to say for everyone who's listening, John, John Scott Camilio, our editor in chief, he is a brilliant man. And he, I always know when it's a John idea because he <laughs> loves Hollywood and he loves old movies. And especially, I, I really felt it when we were talking about the camp. He's like, it's 80s horror slasher flick. And I was like, yeah, okay. I, I know exactly where this came from. <laughs> I've got to watch some of those, uh, you know, is it Friday the 13th, I guess it's, uh, is that, is that Jason? Yeah, it's uh, Camp yes. Crystal Lake or whatever it is. And, yes. and uh, I got a large charge out of it because, you know, there's the Kevin Bacon, you know what I mean? You see these people from way back when it was, it was fun. I will say, still never seen it. I still will not watch it. <laughs> it's too much for me. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's see. Oh, I love this question. This is really great. Earlier in the chat, you guys mentioned that um, not always do you get to be the one to come up with the title for your book. Sometimes it does come from either the editor, sales, someone else has come up with the title. Uh where in the process would you suggest a title if you were trying to suggest one? If you really wanted a title that you're like, I like this one, where would you throw that out there? Well, I'd start with it. If I if I had it, if I wanted it, I'd put it right mm -hmm. on the proposal. And then if they said, uh, we don't like the title or we'd like to change it, mm -hmm. I'd be like, okay, well, what have you got? And then, right. you know, let's do that. And, mm -hmm. uh, but to be honest, Mostly, I find that, and this may be just from years of doing it, I, right. I'm like, what do you think? Anybody got an mm -hmm. idea? I'm, I'm much more uh, likely to just sort of throw it out there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I don't know. What do you think? Lisa? Well, I always have a title, but I, I usually have crummy titles, to be honest. I, I really don't have really great titles. <laughs> Once in a while, there's a good title, and I can't even think of one. But... Um, <laughs> But once in a while, I think, ooh, this is, they got to stick with this one. But mm -hmm. most of the time, I don't care. But unfortunately, sometimes I feel like there's, I don't connect them to the book. They're a little too generic or something. I mean, they're mm -hmm. a good title, but I can't connect it to the book. Probably right. because the book is already written when the title comes through. If the title, right. had been, now in the one I've got now, John came up with a title and it fits perfectly. And mm -hmm. so I can play he's good that. at that. He's yeah, he's yes. good at that. But I need to know, I kind of need to know it midway through or something because mm -hmm. otherwise, like devious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the nun one. Yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to be fair, it's not just your books that have that happen no, sometimes. No, no, no. They're there are a number of mystery and thrillers that sometimes I look at the title, I'm like, I don't, this tells me nothing. I don't know where I'm going with this, uh, well, but I well, always too, love it. You can be too generic. I'm reading a book now called Horse, and it's about <laughs> a horse. And I thought, it fits. <laughs> and, and I really like the book so far, but I, when I'm, my friend is saying, oh, you'll like it, you'll like to read Horse. Well, I Google Horse, Right. <laughs> Books, horse, and there's pony this, and that, uh, is it just horse? Did she right. get it wrong? And I was kind of questioning if she had the right title. And sure yeah. enough, so I can't just say bloody mystery, or, you know, it has to, it has to be right. not as generic as that. Well, another yeah. one that the title comes first is, and John helped on this, the next book that Susan and I, Lisa and I are writing together. There you go. I, I, <laughs> I was waiting to see when it would happen. <laughs> is uh, Nowhere to Die. And it takes from my Nowhere series, because I have nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, nowhere safe. And Lisa has the To Die series. And um, and so he came up with the two. And we, we have written the proposal and are... Uh, as soon as we're done with what we're doing, we're hoping to jump onto that one and uh, get into Nowhere to Die. Yeah, so that one is, that really works. Because because the characters are from those two series. So mm -hmm. really, it's brilliant. Yeah, and I love a good mashup and a mashup title is so fun. He, <laughs> he really is very good at those things. He's They're... great at titles. He's really <laughs> great at titles. 
Yeah. I just wish I could remember some of them. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I mean, your uh, the bio I was looking at earlier is already out of date, and it was like some, an author of seventy five novels. And I'm like, I couldn't. You're. It would be lucky if I could remember three. So I think you're doing good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you didn't write them. <laughs> you know, you should be able to remember that. <laughs> that you know, I can't. I can't weigh in on that part. Um, all right, I love this question. This was asked a little bit earlier. So we're going to go back into crafting just a little bit and your process. Uh, this commenter said, let's say that you're feeling uninspired. You're sitting at your computer for an hour. Nothing is coming out. How do you get your creativity to start? Play Wordle. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I, I love the big game. I think okay. I'm reading. I, go for, I might go for a walk. Yeah, I go for a walk, play with the dog. Uh, Nancy and I sometimes, when we're together, sometimes we're together because w the family has a beach house and mm -hmm. uh, we write there. And then we'll do crossword puzzles and stuff like that uh, or go out to get a pizza or something. Mm -hmm. um, but just you need to break it up. Uh, you need to right. have a new perspective. And sometimes, sometimes, this sounds weird, but watching a movie, or mm -hmm. something that just gets you out and or reading a different book and you say, mm -hmm. oh, what was I thinking? You just you just need to break that clog. Right. Um, I have a I had never had writer's block until this past spring. I can't remember, I can't remember what it was about, but I really <laughs> badly mm -hmm. and for days and days and days and weeks and weeks and weeks. And I think. In my case, there was a lot going on in my personal life. Mm -hmm. And so I just couldn't focus. Uh, that mm -hmm. That's where I have a lot of trouble when I'm focusing. When it's winter in Oregon and you can't go out and it's dark for about every hour except for four, uh, that's, <laughs> that's the best for writing. You know, that's really good. You can't go, you can't go for a walk. You can't you're just stuck there with your cup of coffee in and the fire and it's kind of wonderful and you know then you want to escape and it, it makes it easy right moon yeah i totally agree yes uh speaking of you know being in those atmospheric locations and like you said you know you're in this place where it's always dark out it's freezing cold one of the things i loved especially about these two books in particular is that they are very atmospheric you feel like you're in these locations you know the last center is in new orleans and as someone who has always wanted you know i next door to new orleans and i've never gotten to go reading the book was like i both want to go more and also don't ever want to step foot in that city now because it feels so scary. I never wanted to go to a summer camp woods location. So that didn't change anything for me reading this book. But, but I am curious, how do you both, you know, do you go to visit these types of locations to get your ideas and get your inspirations you draw from that real world? Or is it just, this is what I picture this feeling and looking like? That was well, a very long-winded question. Sorry. I like to, I like I to mean, go. We all went, we, Lisa and I went to camps when we were young, and, and I sent my daughter to camps. And so there's some of that that you kind of right. know. And, uh, you know, we, watching those horror movies, you kind of got an idea. <laughs> well, That's and true. We, we grew up in a time, too, where we were outdoors in the woods and stuff, right, Nance? You know, yeah. when, when, when uh, at Teddy Dickey's house and stuff like that. So that would it's part of the the Oregon thing you know the campfires mm -hmm. and stuff like that and for me I like to go to the places uh I feel very uncomfortable if I write about a real city that I haven't mm -hmm. been to um and New Orleans I had not been to and John wanted the book that I was writing to be set there and I thought oh you know the the culture is so different mm -hmm. Not the right. atmosphere, the weather, the history, the culture, the social strata. It's all different from what I'm used to. But right. so I did go there. Mm -hmm. Really blended in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, just, I'm sure. I'm sure it was just very seamless. <laughs> anyway, uh, sometimes you can't. 
And mm -hmm. I, I like to make fictitious towns because then I can do what I want with them. But you got to remember, you got to make a map so you know that you're going the right place and stuff. Then you don't mess right. up much. So I say there, there are definitely, you know, pros and cons to either side of it. But um, I, I could definitely see if I were to write, if I was writing a fake location, fake town, fake city, the the locations of everything would definitely be my downfall. So yeah. probably, probably best to stick to real places. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Okay. Love this. This reader is curious. Uh, do you feel it's most important to have strong characters or mind-blowing plot twists or epic settings when building your novel? Which one do you focus on the most? Start with plot for me. Mm -hmm. Then you've got to get those characters because if you don't have the yeah. characters, nobody cares. So, uh, and as far as setting, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we pretty much stick to, you know, okay, so Elisa is in New Orleans sometimes, but uh, <laughs> uh, mostly it's like somewhere in Oregon or, or California mm -hmm. I, or Washington. I mean, I'm pretty good on all of those states, uh, but I don't venture too far out there. I did do uh, uh, one book was in uh, the Caribbean. So, I mean, good, but like Lisa said, you kind of want to go there. I was there. And so that was, right. you know, made it, but so. I, I lost the question. <laughs> it was, oh, it was, okay. Sorry, I went on that. It was, it was no, you're okay. the plot, the character versus. Oh yeah, the, yeah. Uh, the plot. And, and, you know, I like to add the atmosphere of wherever I am into the book. I think it's almost another character, but I, I just read a book that was a really good book. And I don't know where it was set. I don't know what those houses looked like. I, I, they just drove cars. They didn't drive a certain kind of car and everything. And still the the, the plot worked and the character worked. So I- There seems I, to be more of that. I, uh, there's a couple of books that- It makes it, it go faster. The, the story moves faster, I think, but- it's Sort of a nameless city or a nameless- Mm-hmm. And it doesn't seem to have the- it doesn't seem to have a flavor, but the story works, the characters work. So I'd say probably, unless that's integral to your plot, like in the camp, Nancy's camp would be, or her neighborhood, that'd be integral. It, it's probably less important than plot and characters. We always start with plot, but the the book seems to then like I say, I don't I don't get into it till page one fifty because that then I know the characters. The characters before are just pawns on a chessboard, but once you start building them, and you know people write, and then you go back and you rewrite the first hour because now you've got your character, and so instead of just sort of having a placeholder, almost it's like now now you've got the story. I remember going to a writers group once where they did a character sheet. And it was your character's name, age, hair color, eye color, favorite color, favorite book, whatever. And I looked at that and I thought, I don't think this meets what I need for a character. What I need for a character is how they grew up. What was their religion? Were their parents mm -hmm. together? Did they have siblings? Where did they live? Backstory. Yeah, backstory. Right. Yeah, it, that, that framed the character, not just... I mean, the idea was right. What was the favorite food? What was it? But I didn't see how that would play into my story. So she ate mm -hmm. spaghetti, right? So uh, I think it. I think the care and the character grows as you write the story, and mm -hmm. that's that's where they came from, in my opinion. And all right. of this should be framed in Nan's opinion or my opinion, because everybody does it differently. And, right. And thank goodness, you know, everybody's books are different. This horse story is kind of freaking me out and I'm loving it. <laughs> I was going to say, I feel like this is like, I'm going to hear you talking about that book for a while. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least it's the book of the week. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> um, speaking of books and what you're reading, do you both, you know, 
obviously you are mystery thriller suspense writer so we have to assume that you read mystery thriller and suspense but do you try to read other genres when you're in the middle of writing i know from experience some authors that you can't read in genre when writing because you know it messes with their flow so i'm curious you know do you read different genres while writing or do you really just stick to that mystery thriller suspense uh well i I like to I like to stick with the mystery thriller suspense pretty much while I'm writing. However, just just last week, my daughter talked me into reading Fourth Wing. Fourth Wing. Is oh boy! <laughs> yeah, the that fourth was wing. good. <laughs> <laughs> I am surprised by that one. <laughs> it's way off from you know, but it was. Yeah. It was a good ride. I, I really, I got done with that and I thought, all right. <laughs> and I, and it was, it, you know, it moved so fast that I was, yeah. and there was all this praise for it and everything. And so I thought, oh, okay. Nope. It's pretty darn good. <laughs> I try to read, I haven't read Fourth Wing and I haven't <laughs> read any Colleen Hoover, but I try mm -hmm. to read what, what my friends, well, they've, they've thrown me some, bad ones before but what my <laughs> friends like what what my editor reads uh, uh recommendations or if you just kind of keep hearing about a book hearing about a book i kept hearing about this book lessons in chemistry and i thought well that sounds mm. like a horrible book fabulous right i haven't quit talking about it till i picked up horse <laughs> <laughs> i mean fabulous book and anyone especially my age or any woman should read that book and I just thought, oh man, this is great. So that's definitely not my genre. Mm -hmm. I, think it's, I think it's important actually to read something completely outside because it does, it, it you know, we're just talking you. about like if you have writer's block, what do you do? Something like that really, you know, and it kind of shines a light on if you're stuck. I, and there, there's, I, I was having this problem writing just this last week. I was kind of like, not sure what I think of this, whatever. And then I read that book and I just read right through it. And it's long. I mean, it's like 600 <laughs> pages. But but I got done with that and I thought, I know what I'm going to do. I know what it is. I, I It's just, it, it energized me. And I think yeah. that books can do that. Lessons in Chemistry was another one, definitely, that I got done with that. And I thought, that's, <laughs> that's amazing. Great. I really like that. Yeah, really, really fun. Mm -hmm. So say we've got we've got some people in the chat who have also said they loved less uh loved lessons in chemistry and you know what Lisa you are not alone someone else is also reading Force and they love it okay. <laughs> and it's my fourth wing it's something totally different <laughs> I'm telling you as I say fourth wing is like 180 degree difference from what's being talked about right now but, but you know what like, it is it's really a sexy romance novel wrapped in a yes. fantasy. I yeah, mean, really, that's what it is, and it was great. Yeah. I I love a romance. I I think I read I blow through a romance a day or every other day, so <laughs> I'm all over it. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have just a few minutes left to our hour. I want to squeeze in this last question. Um, maybe one or two more if we can get to it. We'll see what Sue says. But this reader is wondering: Can you remember the funniest typo you've ever written? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so say because I definitely have one that I think I sent to both of you at one point so <laughs> I, I'm curious to hear what you two have it's the uh <laughs> we, were writing, we were were we writing together I'm trying to no I was writing the book it. and you were editing it because I'm I was curious typing. I, I and I was typing it and you read it and you called me up and while we're if you notice that the uh k and d are the opposite fingers on your keyboard anyway uh my people were going to the some company kickoff mm -hmm. and, and I wrote dick off Mm -hmm. and Nancy, Nancy calls me up she's just chuckling she says I don't think the men are gonna want to come to this <laughs> That's I don't know that could be a that could be a very interesting place to take the novel <laughs> anyway that that's the one I remember and it's yeah that's what I remember too yeah the company this 
kicked oh, yeah, there, was, there was another one where he the some guy he he was supposed to wipe his hand across his lip and it came out lap <laughs> nervously wiping his head yeah <laughs> We have had some fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's so easy to make the world's worst typos, whether you want to or not. And I will say, like, I, I you know, I'm also I am a publishing professional. It's what I do. And I sent very official documents to many, many authors, you two included, where instead of the word add A D D, there was an S instead of D. <laughs> And no one caught it for like a year. I sent this document out for a year before someone finally went, hey, I think you want to take a look at this. So it can always be worse. <laughs> oh, we have to end this pretty soon or I'm going to be having mascara down my face. I'm so Just sorry. Like my heroines. I saw there one you go. of the... I saw one of the questions kind of flip by and, and someone asked, when you do your 40 page synopsis, how do you do it? Yes. And I just wanted to speak to that. And basically it's like we write a chapter or two and then we write just a narrative. This happened, this happened, she did this, she did that. And it's just, it's just that. And so it's, yeah, it's just a, just a narrative. It's not like an outline. It's not, it's, and it just is a synopsis for the, but really, we write it from the beginning of the book, even though we've written a couple chapters and just write mm -hmm. the story. And it's and it's a, a skeleton because you know you get you get really yeah. gotta flesh it out. Yeah, yeah, it's just kind of yeah. There, you're gonna add a lot to it, but that's what it is. Yeah, it's it's a little bit like stage directions. <laughs> yeah, there's no there's no real. She goes theory. to the dick off party. <laughs> You know, again, <laughs> you got to laugh about it. And I still think you should have snuck it in and just see what happens. <laughs> oh, that was a few years ago. <laughs> Don't tell John I said you should sneak that in. He would not be <laughs> as amused. No, I don't think so. He would catch it. <laughs> Our hour, my screen is freezing, so I'm so sorry if I'm talking over anyone, but... I think that is our hour, and I saw Sue, you pop back on, so I think oh, it's I just, time. We're having a blast. We, we, <laughs> I, we are, yeah. we have us, literally, we're wiping our eyes, we're laughing so hard. This is You're great. You're having this a blast because you have pizza. Yes, right. <laughs> yeah, you, you get food, so. Yeah. Well, I was polite, that's why I turned myself off. I didn't want to eat in front of you. <laughs> we have no pizza. And Robert, <laughs> it doesn't look like Robert has pizza either. He's still not sitting at his computer. <laughs> He's outside rocking to the concert. No. <laughs> no, I just wanted you to see that I was being sincere. I wrote in the in the chat that we were having a blast and we really are. Oh, and good. This hour just flew by. And that's why I didn't want you, you know, if any, oh, there's no Robert is here. And Robert had way too much pizza. <laughs> I feel like I'm the only one that hasn't had pizza you in a while. I'm going to have to go find some. Yes, I want pizza now, too. I know. Yeah. I'm like, now I've got to go get pizza. That's right. <laughs> Started something. Sorry. Yeah. Anyway, um, uh, we you guys have been a delight. I just, and okay. Lauren, thank you so much for, it, it's been, like I said, we, I think we felt like we've been watching a sitcom. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, thank like you I for said, having us. It was yeah, really, really great. And I even get to see my sister who is not sitting next to me at the beach house right now, but clearly a <laughs> hundred miles away. So good. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much, Sue, and to all of the libraries for letting, you know, letting me come and co-host well, this event. I love getting to chat with our authors and I really love getting to talk with new readers and you know facilitate those conversations so thank you guys so much for letting me come and host this little party and thank you Lisa and Nancy it's always so much fun to get to hang out with you guys
Well, it's fun too. And Thank next you. time we will have pizza. We'll just eat while everybody talks. <laughs> That's why I unmuted it so you could hear a live audience. What do you think of that? So they're just talking to a screen. There we go. I don't have a sound yeah. machine. They're, they're really here. <laughs> and Robert, thank you so much for letting us. Um, this is thanks to Tewksbury that we have a webinar um, set up. So thank you so much. Yeah, so. next time, Robert, show us eating pizza. <laughs> <laughs> well, and before we... Before we fully close out, I do want to make sure I share that oh, yeah. I am hosting a flash giveaway featuring both the newest books, The Last Center and The Camp, plus signed book plates to put in both of those copies of books. We're going to have five winners. In addition to both of those books, five people are going to win a $25 gift card to Barnes & Noble, as well as maybe some extra swag. It depends on what I've got in the office, but we are going to be hosting that in our Between the Chapters Book Club Facebook group. You can also find the link to that in, uh, if you go onto Facebook, just go to Kensington Publishing or Between the Chapters. We're going to have links up to our private group where that giveaway will be hosted later this evening. So like I said, we're going to have five winners. So everyone who is here in this chat, you get a bonus entry when you go in and in that comment section on the post, just tell me what book Lisa kept talking about during this chat, uh, and you will get a bonus entry. <laughs> horse? Yes, horse. All you gotta do is leave a comment that says horse, and you will be automatically entered with an extra entry. And thank you, Robert, for posting the group in the chat section so you guys can just go and follow us, and that giveaway will be up in the next few minutes once we're off air. So, and we, okay, we're going to bring it up up here. What do you think? <laughs> oh, you guys, Constantin, you guys are the best. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. And thank, thank you, you everyone. everyone. We appreciate it. <laughs> Bye from Oregon. Bye-bye. Have a good night. Maybe. Maybe. Bye, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Love you guys. Thank you. Bye.